Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Drew and the subject is International Law Pursuit. Drew says, Hello, Nathan and Ben. I began studying for the LSAT this month, February of 2023. I'm an undergraduate senior and plan on taking a gap year to truly master the concepts of the LSAT and maximize my score. I plan on taking the test in September and November and then applying in that cycle. My question is, because I received a 136 diagnostic test, is this time frame unrealistic? I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't know. Like, this is exactly the same as the episode we just recorded, right? Where it's like, I don't know how long it's going to take you to reach your goal. I can't, I really can't tell you. Yeah. But I can tell you that if it's February now and you're not planning on taking the test until September, you know, you should be looking at a double digit increase at least by then. Yeah. Off of your cold diagnostic. Yeah. But 136 is, you know, on the lower side and you might need a 166 in order to go to the school you want to go to. Yeah. So I don't know whether it's realistic or not. All I know is good job for starting early. You know, like you should be asking questions about what to do over the next month instead of like, is this Grand seven plan. month test yeah. going to uh, plan going to work? Um, it says I'm self studying with the LSAT demon comma a different LSAT website, another different LSAT website, a book that we don't like, another book that is okay, but really old, and <laughs> 10 actual practice tests, which are all in the demon. Yeah, cut all of that. Yeah. Just I know that <laughs> use the demon. <laughs> people might have given you those books or you bought those books for yourself, but nothing is in those books that is not already in the demon. And if you're here already, if you're with us studying in the demon, you don't need anything besides the demon. Nothing. Yeah. There's more than enough content in there to last you a solid year. Yeah. I mean, think about all the explanations and videos and questions. There's over, there's almost 10,000 LSAT questions. I would stop with all of this. You can't, yeah, you can't run out of material in the demon. If you do, you start over from the beginning. It's 10,000 questions. It's a hundred practice tests, 10,000 questions. Like you, if you do all of them, congratulations. And now start over because you're not the same person you were before you started. Drew continues with a 3.4 GPA. I believe I need to score 150 or above to get into a decent school. Oh my God. Drew, with a 3.4 and a 150, you're not getting into any decent schools. Those are not decent schools. Those are bad law schools. Yeah. If they would admit you with a 3.4 and a 150, that's a bad law school. You've just given yourself a lot of debt and no benefit. Go to lsatdemon.com forward slash scholarships, put in your 3.4 yeah. and start looking for schools that will let you come for free. Uh, 160, 165 plus, those are yeah. the scores you need to shoot for. 160 is to me the minimum. I, I can't, I cannot endorse anybody going to law school with less than a 160. I just don't think I, I know too much. I know, I know too many of the other killers that you're going to be competing with in law school. I also know that people can work their ass off and improve from a score like 136 to a 160 something. So I don't think that my recommendation is going to keep anybody out of law school. I don't think I'm being elitist by saying this. I'm just trying to protect you from the predatory law schools. Yep. I think you're going to yep. get ripped off if you go to law school with a 150. Yep. Um, Drew acknowledges I might need this score or above to get into a decent school and have any opportunity of receiving financial aid. What you mean is scholarships. Everybody gets, quote, financial aid, which is just loans. You don't want financial aid. You want merit scholarships based on your LSAT. Yep. Although I've been told everyone learns this test differently and it takes time, I consistently study multiple hours a day, six days a week to ensure I can understand the foundation of the test, but I'm unsure I can do it in my time frame. Yeah, I'm unsure that you can do it in your time frame too, Drew, but who cares? I, we are all unsure whether we're even going to be alive in September or November of 2023, right? We all hope we are. But shit happens and you, like, I don't know, we can't prognosticate everything in the future. <laughs> I agree. I mean, <laughs> what you can do is you can do a question and then you can right. review the shit out of it. The multiple hours a day concerns me because yep. 
I'm worried that you're skimming. It sounds also like when you say, I'm trying to ensure I can understand the foundation of the test. To me, that sounds like reading a bunch of books on theory. You did mention two books already, and those books are going to invite you to read about theory as opposed to doing actual questions and then learning from your mistakes. That's the secret sauce. Uh, Drew continues. I have begun by mastering reading comprehension and reasoning structure. Don't know what that is, Drew. Then I will incorporate logical reasoning with my reading comp study and then add logic games and study all sections at once. No, stop. is this the best method of studying? <laughs> Sorry. No, stop, stop. So go to LSAT Demon, go to the drilling page. By default, Demon's choice is selected, which means it will choose which section you study in this moment. Let it decide. Stop making all these decisions. Just hit start. It will give you a game or it will give you a reading comp passage yeah. or it will give you an individual logical reasoning question. Whatever it gives you, that's what do you should that do. And stop thinking about all of this. Yeah. You get you're rid a, of everything here. <laughs> you're a novice, Drew. You don't know jack shit about this test. And all these resources that you have are not actually helping you. If you're listening to us for advice, thank you very much. You have an LSAT Demon account, whether it's a free account or a paid account. We love you. Thank you for trusting us. But please just fully trust us. Stop making these stupid plans. Stop like this idea that you're going to focus. You're going to master reading comp first. No, you're not. <laughs> you're probably not going to ever be perfect on reading comp. I'm sorry. You started with a 136 LSAT. It's unlikely that you're ever going to truly master reading comp. You probably really, if you were going to master anything, it's probably going to be the games. You're probably also worst at the games. Most students who just start are worst at the games. And so what you're doing here is you're burying your head in the, stand, in the sand. You're working on the thing you should be working on first, last. And yeah, <laughs> demon's choice is the answer for you, Drew. The demon knows vastly more about LSAT preparation than you do. And so you planning this stuff is actually hurting your ability to improve. It's also wasting your time. Like, yeah, literally, you can turn off this episode right now. You don't even have to hear us finish talking. You go do Dem <laughs> Demon's Choice and you are going to be making progress as long as you do that question and review it. Stop thinking about the best method of studying. Stop thinking about your time frame. Stop making a study plan. Just go to LSATDemon.com and do one question, please. If, yep. if you get it right, then do another one. If you get it wrong, well, then we've got videos, written explanations, the ask button, lots of help so that you can sort out that question. And that question is the most important thing that you can think about right now. That is the key to unlocking the rest of the test. Thank you, Drew. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. 